You're right, Dijkstra. Welcome to Interval Interviews number, I think it's 17 or 18. How are you? Hanging in there. Yeah. <laughs> I teach at Berkeley College of Music in uh, full online, except for a couple of saxophone lessons I'm going to do in class, in person, with like these ridiculous, crazy masks where you stick your saxophone through oh, really? a mask to a hole. And then there's a flap, and then there's going to be like. <laughs> and is no there idea. something over the the bell? <clears throat> no, that's uh, that. We don't have to do that. It's good to play music with people, you know. Yeah, At sure. So and how that's... how long is it si since we last saw each other in the flesh? Do you think? <clears throat> I was just thinking about that because uh, I remember being in Pathet actually, project with John Hollenbeck and Stuart Brown. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then I think I did a tune with your big band. I yeah. sat in for a tune. But you that was probably you took me back to Pathet to party or something. That was uh, oh, two thousand and four <laughs> or something like that. Or yeah, something like that, right? Yeah, maybe. So it's a long time. You look exactly the same. Yeah, you too. Well, I, <laughs> I, I have blonde hair. Oh. And yeah. how long have you been in the U.S. for? Uh, 2002, I moved. Okay. So that's like uh, almost 20 years now. Yeah, so we, met, in, we met originally in Amsterdam. <coughs> um, well, no, in fact, I think we met in Glasgow. Um, yeah. Was it, which yeah. group, you, there was a group that came over with Misha Kuhl and uh, Michael Vatcher. Yeah, that was uh, probably in 96 or 95. Was that 96? your group? Yeah, that was my band. Um, you know, the director of the BIM house had some connections in Scotland and he recommended me for whatever it was that you set up. Yeah, yeah and, so uh, and your life was never same, the same again. No, <laughs> it changed forever. <laughs> 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 By knowing the bank. No, that's actually true because you guys got me interested in, you know, playing the tin whistle and uh, okay. doing like Scottish music and I play with your band. It was really cool. You know, it was really a life changing. No, I'm not uh, Well, I, I, <coughs> I remember we did that, um, the Marty Story Karma Park project and um, in the, which was the video and the dancing and everything. my big band and you were part of that I'm pretty sure and then the main thing I remember mm. was the party afterwards there was this crazy party and <clears throat> I had this uh, ladle with whiskey and iron brew in it and I was just going around putting it directly in people's <laughs> mouths and we all got incredibly drunk but it was fantastic we had a really great gig and it was a fantastic party and then at 10 o'clock in the morning all these Glaswegian cleaners came in and kicked us all out you, I think you didn't you get married to somebody American or how, do you have any kids and stuff like that? Two kids. Wow. Two daughters, beautiful daughters. The oldest is almost seventeen. The youngest is fourteen. Wow. <coughs> it's great. Yeah. No, that's and are they properly really American? Well. They're American and they're Dutch as well, so they have double. Um, so there's options, you know. Do they speak Dutch? Well, a little bit. It's kind of hard. I mean, I spoke Dutch to them the first like eight years, and then it's just you know you have to constantly like you know you have to speak you know you have to constantly correct them, and it just gets tiring. <laughs> but uh, I'm also a little bit lazy. I have to admit, you know, with that stuff. Yeah. Um, so I, I, we, you, you've agreed to do this gig uh, with us, and. We announced your name as being on the program, and then it turned out you thought that you were going to be playing solo. 
which obviously was my fault. So I apologise for kind of getting you in under false pretenses. But um, yeah, I was already getting really nervous, and I was starting to practice and prepare <laughs> the music, and yeah. Well, the so you need to explain me what, what's going to happen. But in UK, we've gone back into a hard lockdown, so now we're back to doing things. But we thought we would, because it was clear it'd last for quite a while. We thought we would start inviting some guests from other countries and take up yeah. take the opportunity to play with <coughs> people that we'd like to play with that live far away, like yourself. You know. Yeah. Cool. So we need to get the audio thing working out, right? We've done it a lot now, and it's. It really feels like improvising with people. It feels like you're making music together, and mm -hmm. it's really quite miraculous and uh, lovely. So, cool. And um, yeah. th this interview is going out in the interval of uh, the David Berkman concert. What do you think of the first half? What do you mean? <laughs> the first How half that we've just right? that we've just heard. Oh. What do I think of it? Yeah, how did it, what did you think of the music? <laughs> I don't understand. Oh, I'm, I don't understand what you mean, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> well, you want to ask again? Yeah, what did you think of the first uh, the set with David Berkman? Uh, I think it was okay. <laughs> A so-so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Final question is, um, the Dutch the Dutch scene is such a strong scene, it has such a strong identity around the world. Um, and you, you are this sort of generation after, after ICP and, you know, those guys made it really famous. <coughs> yeah. Um, and it struck me that you guys had all that free improv, com you were comfortable with all that free improv, but also got interested in some other things as distinct from your 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 um <coughs> people that came before you do you still feel well first of all the two questions first one is is that do you think that's an accurate description of the dutch scene and secondly how do you personally feel how dutch do you feel now uh, in terms of your as a musician that's yeah that's really interesting stuff because you know when i started um, when I moved to Amsterdam in what is it, 84 or something and of course I was a big fan of of the ICP and their playing and I was you know that was one of the first concerts jazz concerts I saw actually ICP with Toby Nichols and Han Benning and I made a huge impression when I was 16. So I mean I got kind of introduced in the Amsterdam improv scene in the late 80s and it was a great time. Uh, but I also went to a school there, like a conservatory, which was a quite free, uh, open, open school, which is in a way not well organized, but a couple of really interesting characters out of the Amsterdam scene were teaching there. At the same time, there was another scene in the Netherlands, which was more like the, the you know, the radio big band broadcast, straight ahead jazz scene. And those two scenes were always kind of clashing with each other. And Han was the only one who was moving between both because he pl plays swing so well, you know. Um, but so these two scenes, I was never interested in taking a side uh, of um, immersing myself just in the Amsterdam free improv scene or the other one. I was always free floating in between. And I sometimes found also that the Amsterdam improv, improv scene was incredibly opinionated about how things should, should go, you know? Yeah. And I just didn't like that, you know? So I felt always kind of with one leg, I was really influenced by that music and the musicians, and, but the other leg didn't feel like, okay, I just, I don't want to be completely part of that. And I didn't, there was always like a little tension. And maybe that is, you know, in retrospect, one of the reasons why I moved to America or why I was interested in playing with people like you or Steve Aguelas or Benoit Del Beck or, you know, German musicians going to Berlin and Cologne and, and you know, to the UK to kind of get out of that really closed Amsterdam scene, which is really great, but it's also a very small sort of opinionated well, I, I, um, it's a very interesting you said that because I felt I felt that about myself. Um, 
because I'm in, I'm really interested in playing completely free music, improvised music, free improvised music that's not really jazz at all, and I've done it for thirty years. But because I also play jazz and I'm, I love playing jazz and I love playing groove and swing mm -hmm. and these things, I kind of always that I've I've never f kind of felt that I'm a hundred percent accepted by no. It's not that I'm not accepted by the free guys. I mean, I think they accept me, but. They don't see me fully as one of them because yeah. I also play jazz, and <clears throat> and um, yeah, yeah, and that's maybe fair enough. But uh, but it it to me they it's completely compatible to be able to be interested in playing both. And yeah, uh, just because you can play bebop doesn't mean you can't play free. It's, in my yeah. mind, no, it's uh, in a way in the end it's all the same thing. I mean, yeah, freedom is a really complex word that is often way wrongly interpreted I think or put too much emphasis on um, but do you still feel yeah, yeah. do you still feel Dutch as a, a Dutch musician a part of that tradition or do you feel yeah I think I do and I feel in my in my music and in my, in my outlook outlook I bring that element um, of you know Dutch improvised music or that aesthetic I mean I still listen to Misha Mengelberg and Han Benik the way they approach stuff and the way they pioneer music also, you know. These guys were like total scratchy 1960s. They came up and seen and they did it. They were punks, you know. Yeah. They were like punks, do it yourself. There was nothing there. There were no clubs, nothing. So they invented all that. And that kind of spirit is the spirit of jazz, really. And that kind of spirit I really like. Yeah. Like that's what we're doing here. That's what that's the US. We don't have subsidies for jazz. It doesn't exist. So yeah. everybody who plays here, every musician who is, became famous as a jazz musician did so by organizing stuff themselves and by starting their own little series. I mean, that's the, the way to go these days. And, you know, create your own little scene and your own, um, you know, and that's, I think, the spirit, really, what it's about, sort of a protest. There's a protest element in jazz, you know. Absolutely. And much, much more these days especially here in the U.S. with Black Lives Matter and how um, at Berkeley and NEC there's real heavy discussions about these, these kind of things, the, 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 the black heritage of jazz, especially in America, you have to think about that. And, yeah. you know, that stuff, is a, there's an element of protest, an element of, of you know, something against. We're going to do it anyway and we're going to, you know, that element is really important, I think. So yeah. it's not about just is it free or is it bebop? It's does it have that spirit of of exploring stuff that that is you or exploring your personality? And, and That's beautiful, man. <coughs> um, and, and I think it it is another layer to it in with COVID and or you know that that thing about actually uh, connecting despite all the barriers that are there and 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 being creative and interacting. Yeah using technology is another layer to it. It's a new sort of way mm -hmm. to protest against limitations and restrictions and that kind of thing. So that's right. kind of what we're, we're doing. Uh, you know, <clears throat> that's what we're doing. Listen, yeah, that's really great. Yeah. Man, that's, that's beautiful. That's, that's really inspired me. Like hearing you say that, that way, it's really captured something very, very accurately about the, our music and, and, and why we play it. And it's really wonderful. And I look forward yeah. to playing with you, next week i'm glad you kind of enjoyed the first set today and i hope you enjoy the second set a bit more maybe yeah the second set is going to be great yeah. no it's all, right. all good all right so i'm going to say goodbye and i'm not going to hang up because i need to talk to you bye, -bye. all right see you tom